Okay, we're live. Yay, you made it. So we're streaming to Facebook and YouTube right now, and we are going to be making chicken and answering questions. Oh, I think mine's bigger than yours. Mine's a little tiny guy. Mine is gonna take the longer. I should have gotten, I should have bought Cornish hens instead. Mine's gonna take longer. I should have started it. How much does yours weigh, do you know? Uh, does it say on the package? It should. Let's see. Mine just says 1,200 grams. Oh, that doesn't help me at all. <laughs> I don't know. It's Japanese. It's the metric yeah. system. Everything else is in Japanese. Um, it's fine. Ooh, it's starting. Yeah, we're here, Kimmy. <laughs> we, we made it. Okay. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching. We got our little stream going. We're going to be making chicken in our black pearl and answering yeah. your guys' questions. So start asking away in the comments if you have any questions. And last uh, time, people were telling jokes. Yeah, yeah. Carrie was telling jokes. Good. Yeah. So, what is this? My chicken is kind of small. Mine's bigger, so mine's gonna take longer, unfortunately. We have we have uh, someone watching from Idaho and Wisconsin, and it's really cold nice. there. It's kind of chilly here um, too, which is why I'm wearing a sweater. Um, it was kind of chilly this morning in in Okinawa, but. Uh, we're, I preheated my oven to 400. I'm going to just put my chicken in the pearl and add some water and then we're going to put it in the oven for about 45 minutes and then just talk with you guys and hang out and chat. So if you have any questions, um, just let us know about carnivore or anything like that. Um, new subscriber here. I like the short, let's see, we'll put it on. Um, new okay. subscriber here. I like the short earlier uh learning that eggnog is just cream and egg yolks yeah 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 that was a that's such an easy that's such an easy thing to make it takes you know basically two ingredients unless you're going to use you know a sweetener or some nutmeg or some cinnamon and it tastes so good yeah let's see um saw the dr chafee interview that was great thank you thanks for watching um kimmy says we're unreasonably cold. Maybe it will make it so we don't have so many bugs <laughs> next summer. <laughs> bugs. I wish it was um, like that. It would be worth it if it worked like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, are you are you, are you um, ready with your chicken? I'm gonna red some butter on mine. Okay. So woo woo just saw the notification for your second live that made me happy. Yay! Yay. I know we're so excited and I finally figured out how to put the chats up on the screen. Last time I didn't I didn't realize you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> so we're learning. Yeah, that'll be easier. We were both consumed with our phones last time watching and okay, the the butter isn't working. That was a bad idea. <laughs> we Are always you gonna salt yours somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Are so, you gonna salt yours or are you gonna wait till after? I'm just putting mine in with some water and putting it in the oven. That's what I did last time and it came out fine. And I like salting it after when I when it's done. Okay. So I've never made a whole chicken before. Um, I buy rotisserie chicken sometimes, but I've never made one. So. so mine's just like that with a little bit of water. Okay. Yep. And then I'll probably put some water in the top here. Yeah. Water in the bottom. My chicken's a little bit big. It's like I'm having to smush. I'm having to smush the lid down on mine. It's like wobbly. Chicken's <laughs> a little too big. Um, so uh, we're both using uh, the, it's called the Black Pearl. It's handmade clay earthenware. Uh, from North Africa, and um, we both love it. <laughs> I use it. I literally, that's the only thing I use now besides my air fryer is, is yeah. this. Yeah, I'm really the same way. I love it. 
Are you, you can use it on the, Yeah, I'm ready. You can okay. use this on the stove, on an open fire, on a hot plate, or in the oven. And then set timer for 45 minutes, and then we'll check on it. Yeah, so the last time that I made a whole chicken in the black pearl, I just did it on the stovetop. And I put right. water in it the same way and um, cooked it for about an hour. And then I put it in the air fryer and got the skin all nice and crispy. And it was so yeah. delicious. Are you going to do that this time too? Are you going to put it in the air fryer afterwards or well, just I take the top off? I think, like, I want to see if the oven kind of makes it crispy um, because yeah. Cassie, when he did his in the oven, he it looked like the skin got kind of crispy. So, oh, really? so I'm curious to see how the oven works. Um, let's see. Yeah. I'm not a huge um, chicken person. I mostly eat beef, uh, some pork and fish. Yeah, that's totally common um, with, with carnivores is to not be a huge fan of chicken. I, but I love a good rotisserie chicken it's so so good especially when the skin's nice and crispy yeah me too yeah and chicken wings but not a lot of just like white meat breast meat chicken yeah right yeah same here yes. and i had probably i had probably 15 chicken wings for breakfast i'm still not hungry and i don't usually eat that much all at once but it was yummy where did you learn about the black pearl so the the founder of the company approached me on Instagram and asked if I would be interested in trying the product. And I said, yes. And he sent one to Serena and I, and we fell in love <laughs> and we've basically just been, <laughs> we've basically just been cooking with it ever since because it's, yeah. it's really awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's honestly, it. it's honestly one of my favorite cooking things ever. Just the fact that you can do anything in it. Oh, Guess what I made in it today? What'd you make, make in it? Something I've never had before. Somebody uh, gave it to me. Deer. Deer, yeah. deer meat. I don't know. Do yeah. I have to be more specific? <laughs> no, no, deer. That's true. It was deer. Um, and uh, I don't know. It's not my It's not my favorite. I'd rather have a ribeye. Um, but I made it in the black pearl and I probably didn't cook it long enough. It was tough, kind of like a steak. Um, but I read and heard from a friend that it's actually supposed to be like really tender if you cook it like a regular roast. And it was only, you know, like this big and this thick. So it wasn't giant. It really looked like a thick steak. So I wasn't really sure how to cook it. Um, but I did it in there um, with a little bit of butter and it's juices that were in the bag with it. And it was good. It was good, but but I would rather have a steak. But if somebody gave me another one or, you know, the time came and I had literally nothing else to eat, you know, like if all my beef was gone and I had that, I would definitely eat it. Aren't you proud of me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's great. It's You're like branching out. I love it. And love someone it. did. Kimmy said that she loves our aprons, which you can get one. You can get one for yourself and, and like cook with your own yeah. cool yeah. black little yeah. apron. Um, you can put a spatula or a spoon in it. They even have pockets. Yeah, and then pockets. <laughs> yeah. Are, yeah. I love these. They're so cool. Um, but yeah, we, um, you can get some on our website. Um, and we did just have a sale, but uh, I think, didn't that end yesterday? We should do another yeah. holiday sale. But um, we should. Yeah. So you can definitely grab your own apron. And let's see, my husband got elk yesterday. We had elk chili, very good. Ooh, yum. Oh, yeah. I've never had elk either. Like in the, I, I only eat typically like pork, chicken, beef. <laughs> so I had never had deer before. I did have bear once in Alaska by accident. And when I found it was bear, I didn't eat anymore. <laughs> but so I'm really like traditional meats only. I'm from Fort Lauderdale, people didn't hunt there, but I've lived here in Southwest Virginia more than 25 years, but I just never had it. Or if I, if I did, I didn't know that I had it. Like somebody must've tricked me or something. Um, so yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever had it before. And I, I really don't like to branch out very much. I'm really happy with my chicken and pork and beef. Yeah. Um, so how much chicken should I eat in a day for protein? I definitely wouldn't 
try to meet your protein goals with just chicken alone. Yeah. Um, I agree. It, because chicken, when I eat chicken, it's more of uh, if I'm not extremely hungry, I'll eat some chicken wings um, or it's a side dish. It's, it's yeah. um, I don't know if, if relying on chicken for your protein yeah. goals is is good. What, what do you think? It doesn't have as many nutrients as beef does. Beef is like one of the most nutrient dense uh, foods on the planet. And so like today, that was not smart what I did today and I will pay for it tomorrow. Probably I'll be tired my glucose will be high. My ketones will be low. I ate all that chicken for breakfast and I've hardly eaten anything. I took a few bites of the deer. And I think I'm pretty sure that's all I had, except I did have a little bit of whipped cream earlier. Like just, a, I wasn't even really hungry. I just wanted it. Um, and I did have, I found raw milk yesterday, which you actually can't buy in Virginia, but you can do a herd share. And I didn't know that. And so a friend of mine has a bunch of it in the freezer. And so she brought me some yesterday and she brought us a gallon, and I think there's like a quarter of it left. Ooh. It was very good. Um, it's a little bit expensive, of course, but it was really good. So that's the, that's the only other thing that I've had today, and that was not smart. I should have had some beef. I shouldn't have eaten as much chicken, so I probably will pay for it tomorrow. So just kind of keep that in mind. Chicken can't be your major source of protein and fat because it doesn't have enough fat on it. Mm -hmm. And so you do have to be careful with that. You don't want to eat too much of the like just the lean protein. That, that will not serve you well. Mm -hmm. So do you, how did the sugar in the raw milk affect you? Um, oh, I should have tested it. I didn't. I'll test it tomorrow. Yeah. I should have tested it and I'll just see. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Cause I, I saw raw milk when I was in California and I didn't get it because I looked at the ingredient, the. It has too much sugar. And it has a lot of sugar. And I was like, yeah. why are people drinking this? It has a ton of sugar. And then mm -hmm. it just like exploded in the carnivore community. Yeah. So I guess like, is that, is there a difference with that sugar? Yeah. I think it's the fact that it's not pasteurized. So that does something like chemically to it and makes it just more like sugar. I'll go ahead and test now because it's been more than two hours since I eat. Okay, I cool. mean, just out of curiosity, just to see, I mean, that was a, a long time ago that I drank that, but it still would be affecting me if it had been really high and then I will test it. Um, tomorrow after I get up, I'll test my glucose and I'll drink it. And then I will test again two hours later and see. Okay. Um, I'm from, I'm in Southwest Virginia, also, um, Blacksburg and would love to find raw milk. Don't think stores are allowed to sell it here. How would I find someone for this? Yeah. Find a local, and um, this is what I just found out. Find a local farmer that does herd sharing. And basically you're buying like, you're buying part of the cow, like technically according to the law, you're buying part of the cow and they are milking it for you and, um, and delivering the milk to you. And they're like boarding the um, cow for you basically is how it works. And then someone suggested Eat Wild is a great website. I know there's another website too that circulates around the carnivore community of it, where you can type in your location and it'll find the, the closest raw dairy supplier to you. Um, so there, that is a thing too. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see. Wild game is tastier if you soak it in salt and ice for 30 minutes before cooking. It I takes some of the gamey taste out. I used to, so when I ate liver a lot, I used to soak my liver in my, in milk for like 30 minutes before I cooked it. Um, and then I just stopped doing that and just started eating it just normal and yeah. still liked it. But I did, I have done that too for, for liver. Um, I talked to, um, I did a, a live earlier today with Mark Straw, I think is how you say his name. Um, and he was saying that, um, that you should, that some people soak it in milk first. Mm -hmm. um, so my, um, my glucose was um, 87, I think is what it said. No, I lost it. I think it was 87. And my ketones were 2.0, which is pretty good. Let me see. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's not bad. That's really good. So, so it must, if it, it, it had a lot of sugar, it didn't mess me up too bad. Oh, my, my glucose was 85 and my ketones were 2.0. So that's not bad. So it no, didn't mess me up. No. I don't think it messed me up. Cool. Okay. And do your, um, do you ship your merch to the UK? Yes. It's a, it's a, the shipping is going to be more expensive, but we can, so if you want something, message us rather than just order it on the website so we can look up the shipping first and see. But I did price some lotion just the other day for somebody, and I think it was like $18. Um, 
which I didn't think was terrible. I didn't know about soaking. I will try that next time. Yeah, the soaking thing is cool. When I got yeah. when I got the camel, I dry brined it for really? like 24 hours and then cooked it. And I think that might have helped with the camel, but camel yeah. was just so boring. <laughs> it was just I you might like it. If you if you if you try something exotic. Yeah, Me? because the flavor, yeah, the flavor is so it's like the chicken of red meat. It was so I boring. Know, but why wouldn't I just, but why wouldn't I just eat a steak then? And then I don't have to feel weird about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't I guess that's a good point. I just like trying new things and yeah. and seeing what they taste like. But I definitely yeah. I think camel jerky would be really good, but I definitely don't think I would it's not something that I'm going to like crave ever, but it was cool right. to try. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys are just now joining, um, we're just cooking chicken in the oven and just hanging out, answering your questions. So just drop them in the comments and um, we'll get to them and put them up on the screen and answer them. So any of your carnivore questions or anything like that. You are live. You are live. Uh, so how was your day, Serena? Uh, it was good. I had that live at um, six with Mark, and it was it was really good. Boy, he's a talker. Really, he's he's a very good talker. Yeah, he, <laughs> his and his story, like he got to the point where um, he wasn't even like fifty. He was in his forties, I think. Yeah, he was in his forties, and his hands were so messed up from doing. I think it was kung fu. Maybe they were so messed up. You can still see where some of them are turned a little bit. Like the doctor said, you're not going to be able to use your hands soon just from the arthritis and stuff. And he's fine now. Like, wow. that's crazy. He was, the doctor said, you're actually, it's her, it's a hereditary kind of arthritis and you're actually so inflamed. You're going to end up needing a walker soon. And he's fine. He works out and, and he runs a farm and he had two really bad injuries that had him down for like years. And, um, he's been carnivore off and on for a while. And he was eating lots of vegetables and still having pain and stuff. And he cut out the vegetables and um, he's doing great. Like it's been, it's been years for him and he's doing really, really well. That's amazing. Yeah. The healing we stories should, are amazing. We should have him on our new six minute success series. Oh, yeah, we should. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. yeah we'll ask him. If you guys haven't seen um, or heard us talk about that yet, we're going to do a new little thing on our YouTube called Six Minute Success Stories, where we want to hear from you guys and um, just hear how carnivore has helped you and how long you've been carnivore, things like that. And it'll just be like a short little clip. So if you are interested in sharing your story, contact us, message us, uh, email us, and we'll set up a time to do a little, a little interview. Yeah, um, six minutes isn't long enough to like run out of things to say or feel weird or and we'll send you the questions in advance, in advance so you'll be ready for it and you can be prepared and it'll be really simple. We'll ask you the questions you'll answer. We're going to keep it to six minutes. Um, and so so I think that's a good amount of time for people to like maybe people that are, are a little bit uncomfortable might be willing to do that for just six minutes. Yeah. Um, so uh, Marcia wants to know the eggnog recipe was amazing. If you were to add spices, which ones would they be? Uh, somebody commented and said nutmeg for sure. Um, last month I made some and put a little bit of pumpkin pie spice in it. And then you could always use cinnamon too. Yeah, I would definitely do nutmeg, cinnamon. Those ones sound like good ones. What yeah. is the difference between nutmeg and pumpkin spice? That seems, it uh, tastes like the same thing to me. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> you're, asking, you're asking me questions, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. If you guys, if you guys watching have any questions, any carnivore questions or anything like that, we're just here making some chicken, hanging out. We're just going to answer your questions and talk to us and uh, hang out, share, share a little bit of your story, anything you want. Just, we're just chilling. <laughs> so you didn't go to Starbucks this morning? Uh, you were still, you weren't, no, still, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, we did. We did. Well, we oh, woke okay. us up really early. Uh, and so we were up, we went to the Starbucks and then started, I started getting ready for this. <laughs> How is she doing? How's Lola doing? She's good. Jared's at the vet with her right now. Uh, Cause oh. he's leaving for yeah. like 12 days or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we have to get all of her medicine and everything since I don't have a driver's license. So we have to get all yeah. of her medicine in advance so I can give it yeah. to her when, when he leaves. Awesome. But, 
she's fine. She's just, she's just an old lady. She's almost 17. So it's to be expected. Yeah. So we will also be, um, so we'll be filming a six minute success story this week with Karen Miles. I'm sure most of you guys know who Karen is. And so we're excited to do that with her. We've had her on the show before to cook. Um, we, we both keep in touch with Karen regularly. She's super cool. And so we'll be doing Karen's six minute success story this week. Um, and then we'll also be, uh, filming another food video. What are we making this week? We're making the, the meatballs. Yes. The and that's cheesy a, meatballs. Yeah. And that's a great thing. Like we thought that would be a great thing for people that are struggling with what to bring to family gatherings or work Christmas parties or whatever it is you have going on this month, your best chance to stay on track is to bring an item that you know you can eat that everybody else will love. And then you just eat that or you eat off the charcuterie board too, or hope that somebody else has something similar. Um, but we thought it might be a good idea to do a couple of recipes that are great things that you can take somewhere that other people will also enjoy. So that just kind of fell into it. So I'm actually gonna do cheesy sausage balls, like sausage cheese balls. And Jess is gonna do like a cheesy meatball kind of thing, right? Yeah, with beef, I think, unless I can find sausage, but it's it's not as easy to find sausage here. Um, yeah. But we always do different things. Yeah. So I think I'll, I will do beef so we can have it, two different options. But we do have a lot of a lot of um, good recipes in our YouTube uh, videos of things you could take that yeah. people would like. Yeah, there's a lot of, of dishes that people would like. But so uh, Roxanne wants to know, how did we meet? Do you want to, do you want to share? Sure. Um, we met so online. We're, no. <laughs> yeah, we, we, <laughs> online dating. We joined online, online dating. <laughs> online friending. <laughs> yeah. So we're both on Instagram and Jess contacted me to be in her Beyond the Meat series, which I just thought was such an awesome name and such an awesome idea. I was like maybe the third guest or something. And we had so much fun that afterwards we were you know, messaging each other back and forth. We were like, let's do something else together. And within like two days, we had come up with a cooking channel. We don't even know where that idea came from. It was just like, we talked for two and a half hours on our first conversation after the live. We talked on the phone, on a video chat for two and a half hours and came up with that. And I think within like another 48 hours or something, we had the name and we were ready to roll. I think we filmed our first video like the next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was, that was about uh, seven, seven months ago. It was like April. April, early May, early May, right? Eight months. No. Yeah. Seven months ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah. very cool. There's so many new faces in the YouTube carnivore community. I love it. Yeah. I, I love it too. I think we need more carnivore content. We need just everyone sharing their stories, which is why we do want to do that six minute success story thing and have you guys share more of your stories because we like we have our stories out there and we're just we'll we're just sharing the same thing over and over of how we, how what how oh my goodness what how carnivore helped us but you guys aren't going to be the same as us so we need to have right. a bunch of people share their stories so so it can reach a wide wider audience and and yeah. get out to more people i agree yeah cuz the more the more content, the better. That we'll we'll start have, encouraging more people to eat meat and yeah. waking more people up that low fat is not the way to go. Because if it wasn't for people like Sean Baker, is the reason that I started Carnivore mm -hmm. and finding him on the internet. So if it wasn't yeah. for people posting their stories and posting this information online, I would mm -hmm. never be Carnivore. Um, right. Serena, Serena happened to come. Oh, you. You kind of did it out of out of uh, coincidence, right? Yeah. Of uh, what? The carnivore? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It was kind of a coincidence. So I have a post-COVID issue that makes things taste and smell rotten. So then almost two years since I had COVID, it'll be two years, like within the next couple of weeks, lost my sense of taste and smell. And it came back like really muted for a while. And then one day in March, three months later, I woke up and things tasted and smelled rotten. So for two months, I basically lived on sweets mostly because it was the only thing that tasted normal. Um, and some of the things were bad. Like we would go somewhere and I would come home and be literally like just sitting on the couch with a warm pack over my stomach, holding a diffuser with essential oils to get the smell out of my nose because it just smelled so bad. And um, it has gotten a lot better since then. But um, but in any case, about two months into this, 
um, I had like a splurge weekend on my birthday and ate like 20 cupcakes in 36 hours or something. Like the sweets were the only thing that tasted good. And I woke up on Monday morning and I was like, that's it. No more sweets. So I can't eat fruits and vegetables because they taste rotten and smell rotten. And I'm not going to eat any more sugar or carbohydrates. And I can eat a hamburger fresh off the grill and a steak fresh off the grill. So can I survive like that? And I found Kelly Hogan, Michaela Peterson, the Joe Rogan podcast, you know, of course, with Sean Baker. Um, and I just like absorbed myself into all of that for the next um, couple of weeks while I was kind of figuring it out and figuring out what I could eat. And now I can eat a lot more things than I could then, but many things still taste and smell like that, like garlic, onion, coffee still smells like that. Every now and then I test, like I'll just smell the jar of peanut butter and see what it smells like. And it still smells like that popcorn. So like, so there are a lot of things that still smell like that. Lots of vegetables and fruits also. I'll just like smell them when other people have them to see, but um, it's okay. Cause I can eat most meats so that's good mm -hmm. so roxanne said i should be brave and stop being shy i was misled i was a misled vegetarian most of my 20s after having two kids i was introduced to keto in 2017 and never looked back yeah that's awesome are you more carnivore now or are you still keto let us know yeah I mean, and either way i feel like you know whether you're carnivore or keto i mean i think carnivore is better but we're all on the same team and it's about giving up the processed fake foods and you're still going to be doing so much better if you just give up all of those things even if you don't go all the way i think that's still awesome yeah yeah my dad uh reversed his type 2 diabetes uh going more keto mm -hmm. and just introducing more meat into his diet and he had gout too and he he hasn't had a flare-up since he reduced his sugar awesome. intake yeah Amazing. so marcia wants to know do you ladies fat fast what do you usually eat when fat fasting? What is fat fasting? Is it like normal fasting? Um, fat fasting is um, where you eat only fat. So like you would just eat butter or just eat some beef fat. You wouldn't eat any protein and you wouldn't eat any carbs. You would just eat fat. I don't know. I think I think the fat fast is, I don't know. May, I haven't done a lot of research on it, but I remember doing that years ago when I was doing really low carb, like shots of olive oil and stuff to get my fat up. And I would do days of fat fasting, but for me, it's just easier to fast. You know, so I haven't done a lot of research on what the difference is between the two. Let us know, Marcia, if you know what the difference is between the two. But I really just, if, we're, if we have a really busy day like yesterday, we, you know, got up early, I exercised. And then I had to go run some errands and then went to the gym so the girls could play basketball and I walked to the track and we had to go to the dentist and then there was basketball practice. And on a day like that, it's really easy for me to just fast. It would be a hassle if I had to take like butter with me and stuff like that. It's just easier to not eat. Um, but I don't fast a lot. Um, every couple of weeks, maybe I'll skip a day just to give my digestive system a break. Hmm. Okay. And I don't fat fast, obviously. I didn't even know what it was. Um, so Roxanne, Roxanne says she's very carnivore. I considered, I consider my carniversary uh, March 1st, 2021 with a few hiccups in there, but overall carnivore. Woo -hoo! That's awesome. That's very Yay. good. So, so it's coming up in a couple of months, the carniversary. Yeah. That's so exciting. Tell us what yeah. you're going to eat for your carniversary. Yeah. Yum. And then um, carnivore for 22 years. Wow. You what? definitely should stare, share your, your story with us. Yes. Yeah. Woo. I guess the That's sun is. Oh, wow. That there are like yeah. cloud just passed over and my whole screen went dark. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, share, contact us in, um, if you want to share your story, that would be an awesome story. Yeah, you can be one of our six minute success stories. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Uh, supposedly, uh, the fat fasting should elevate your ketones oh. and lower your glucose using or without starving oneself. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm very intrigued. Yeah, give it a try. See, see yeah. how it works for you. And yeah, you're still gonna you're still gonna lower your glucose and raise your ketones just from fasting. It just depends on how much butter you can stomach. You know, I mean, ooh, yeah, you know how much butter and and all that stuff you can stomach without you know kind of feeling yucky and all of that. So maybe I'll test it. Maybe I'll use my glucose monitor and do it one day and just see what happens. But the higher fat thing is definitely working for me still. The higher fat I eat. So I, you disappeared again. It's the clouds. Yeah, it's the clouds. Yeah. 
Um, so I do think that high fat is better for a lot of people, but Jess doesn't do quite as high fat. I mean, just to be clear, carnivore is always high fat, but Jess does 65 or 70%. I do about 80%. And we both have, you know, a lot of good luck with that. I don't think fasting is necessary and fasting can, you know, kind of be a slippery slope for people that come out of like binge eating or disordered eating or, um, diets where you're continually under eating or starving yourself, you know, really low calorie diets. So fasting is kind of, you know, some people love to fast and some people don't, I don't mind doing it once every couple of weeks, but I don't want to get into like extreme fasting or anything. Again, that did not work for me. I love, I loved intermittent fasting. Uh, so we're just like eating, um, in a six hour window and not eating it for 18 hours while I was basically the night and mm -hmm. into the morning. Um, yeah. and that I really enjoyed that just because it was like a routine and, um, I ate twice a day. So typically I do kind of fast intermittent fast anyway, cause I'm yeah. only eating twice a day. So it's just, uh, happens, but, um, yeah, I don't, I don't do long fasts. I only did one 24 hour fast. Um, but I think it's more beneficial if you have like a ton of weight to lose, but I don't. So I don't, um, I will, I never got on into to yeah. long fasting, but yeah, see. the autophagy is great. Um, yeah. you know, there are a lot of healing benefits. Um, if you have loose skin, it can help with that, but fasting isn't necessary by any means. So almost, almost fully carnivore for 24 days. I'm still in the adaption period. Woo! How's that going for you? Some people, some people have a hard transition um, time. Yeah. Let's see. Um, yes, two years. I can't believe it. Ribeye is my favorite. Kerrygold butter. My favorite uh, beef jerky sticks I order from Amazon are Larissa's uh, mm -hmm. beef sticks. They're delicious. Yay! Nice. I haven't seen those. I'll have to go look for them and see. I have a hard time with processed meat still because of my smell and taste issue. So I may not be able to do that yet, but um, things like pepperoni, I can eat just a little bit after they're already cooked. Like my girls will make like a plate of pepperoni, you know, and I can eat, so I can eat a little bit of those. Um, but I have to be careful. I can't eat like salami and deli meats are still hard for me because they just have that horrible smell to them. But um, so I don't think I could eat those. I have a hard time with beef jerky too, unless I make it myself because it just always has something in it that makes it smell bad to me. Yeah. Fasting yeah. is stressful and brings out disordered eating. I like reminders like from Chafee where it's just eat meat and uh, don't eat anything else and thrive. Yeah. Just make it simple. Yeah, simple. Especially if you're just starting carnivore, just mm -hmm. don't worry about all of that, all the trends and, and everything yeah. or who's saying this is better than that. Just eat meat, eat the meat that you're craving and yeah. drink some water put some salt on it and yeah. you'll be good. Yeah. Let's for the first 60 days, don't worry about anything. Just eat, fill your body up, be nourished, let your bones re, you know, heal themselves and let your body heal itself and let the toxins out and all the oxalates and all of that stuff. Just get to where you're feeling good. Make sure you're eating enough. Make sure you're eating enough fat, you know, but don't worry about anything the first two months, just kind of get through it. Cause that's going to be, a little bit hard there at the beginning and you'll feel so good if you just give it that chance and don't cheat on Christmas because that's <laughs> such a bad thing. It feels so good. Remember, make something that everybody else will enjoy and you just eat that. Yeah. And, or eat ahead of time. Yeah. If you, right. If, yeah. Um, the, the, so those sticks are grass fed beef sticks. So nice. that sounds really good. I can't wait to get back to the state so I can start trying all of these things because yeah. here there, we, I don't have all those options. Um, do you have a video of beef jerky? Do you, you don't have a video of beef jerky, do you? Um, I don't think so. I, I think I filmed it one time, but it's kind of boring, but I'll make one. Um, Laura Spath has some videos and some information on beef jerky. Um, it's super easy to make. And I actually made some, we were having company um, two Sundays ago to like play games and hang out. And of course we had chips on the table for everybody. So I put um, like the grocery store sells like the really thin slices of ribeye like to make for stir fry and stuff like that. So I brought some of those home and laid them out on Christmas paper. And my oven is actually uh, a regular oven. It's also an air fryer and a dehydrator. And so I put in two cans of that. And by the time everybody got here, I was able to pour them into a bowl and use them as a chip with like Ooh. sour cream dip and stuff. So they were, like chunky. I made them, you know, once they were dehydrated, they were about this big. They curled up a little bit. It looked a lot like a chip. I mean, actually, um, almost everybody ate them and liked them. So that's a definite, I had a whole bowl, like a, a bowl about this big full of beef chips 
and used Ooh. them in dip. It was really good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You need to make a video on that. Or yeah, I'll do that because uh, that's a great thing for the holidays too. I'll do that. My air fryer has a dehydrator. Maybe I should try to do it too. Um, yeah. Anthony Chafee is amazing. Eat meat, nothing else, and thrive. Yep. That's we true. agree. Mm -hmm. Dr. Chafee is awesome. I'm feeling yeah. well. I've lost 3.5 uh, kilos so far. Woo! Yeah. That is so very exciting. great. Yeah. Um, we're, our, chick, our chicken has about 15 minutes left. We're just making some chicken in the oven and hanging out with you is guys. Is that all just 15 minutes? 15 minutes? 15 minutes left. Did you set your timer? Yeah. I did not set my timer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, we're just answering your questions. Any questions you have about carnivore, if you want to share some of your victories, we're just here to hang out and talk with you guys and get to know you guys. And, um, if you want to know something about about us um you can ask uh but yeah someone said uh yes please do make a jerky video so i will maybe i'll do it tomorrow i need to go yeah, to the store that would be anyway. that does sound like a great thing to take too for for the holidays and then yeah. that would open up a good be a good opportunity to open up a conversation about why potato chips aren't the best option um so <laughs> have these do that. <laughs> Beef chips. You <laughs> okay. Uh, any advice on keeping an eye on macros or should I just eat? So you're, you said that you're uh, kind of new to carnivore. 24 days. Yeah. 24 days in. Um, I, I don't know. I wouldn't track anything in the beginning. I would just eat what you're craving uh, yeah. and and just kind of let your body adjust and don't overwhelm yeah. yourself with too much uh, because it, it is a really big transition going, depending on what your diet was before. If you were going from sad to, to carnivore, that's going to be a big transition. So um, just kind of just chill and just eat the meat and um, eat what you like. But yeah, what do, what do you yeah. think? Yeah, I agree 100%. And I think that the only thing that I would preface and say is to make sure you're eating enough. And just and by that, I mean, you don't really have to track it, but just know what a reasonable amount of food and calories looks like. Because I did the wrong thing for eight months, gained 18 pounds. I was under eating by a lot. I was, sorry, that's my oven. I was under eating by a lot. <laughs> like plays this a song. It's almost done. What is that for? I raised the temperature a little bit because I'm worried my oh, oh okay. So when it gets to the temperature, it plays this little song. Um, so I was under eating by a lot. I was fasting every other day. So fasting basically three whole days a week. So three rolling 48 hour fasts. And on the days that I was eating, I was eating like two hamburger patties with a little bit of cheese on them. I mean, that was basic. That was you know, almost the only thing I was eating. You know, one of the days might be a steak with a little bit of butter. But because I came from under eating all the time. Yeah. I came from like a Weight Watchers plan where I was basically hardly eating anything. You don't know what being whole, full and being hungry feels like. So it is hard. Like if you come from that, like if you're always, if you've always been on a diet and you don't, you're like never really full unless it's roughage and you don't really know what it feels like, just pay attention and eat three meals a day. Don't do what I did. Don't fast every other day. Fasting isn't necessary. Eat three meals a day, every day, let your body you know, nourish yourself and heal. There's a lot of healing to be done after, you know, our whole lives of eating all of the garbage we shouldn't have been eating. So just give yourself that time and really make sure that you're eating enough. And you have to track for a few days just so you can see what a reasonable amount of food looks like. Um, use one of the apps and set it to um, maintenance calories, not like weight loss, because you get like an extra 300 calories a day anyway for thermogenesis. For the amount of energy your body takes to burn up the meat and fat so you really do have to eat a lot more in the carnivore diet so set it to maintenance track for just a couple of days if you need to so you can see how much food you're supposed to be eating and then you'll have a visual and then you won't have to anymore like if you feel like you might be under eating but i don't usually recommend that in the beginning at all i say nourish your body eat the cheese eat the meat eat the butter eat all the things that you've been afraid to eat that you enjoy so much and you'll start to feel better almost right away yeah. The key is just take out the processed food, take out the seed oils and then eat, eat the meat and then you'll feel better. And then you'll be able to experiment more, the more yeah. comfortable you are with it. Absolutely. Um, so I don't track macros. I do try uh, to base my average day 
is a pound of ground beef, and that's around 80 grams of protein. Protein grams should be around 1.5 grams per ideal body weight. Yeah, so, so just not- get the visual. Yeah, get the visual, and then go from yeah, there. You need more. You need more than that. So you're probably under eating. I mean, it's great that oh, yeah. I think she said she was losing weight, and that's great. But um, eventually, it might slow down and stop altogether if you're under eating, and that doesn't sound like. Um, one pound probably is not enough. I ate a pound. I ate a pound of ground beef for breakfast yesterday with two chicken wings. And that was just for breakfast. (laughs) Yeah. So like, really, I know that's crazy. Um, And especially if you're, if you can get to where you can stomach a lot of beef, Kelly Hogan is sometimes doing 32, 3,500 calories a day and maintaining her weight because it's so much fat and your body just absorbs it and uses it and burns it as fuel. Um, so just keep in mind that there are people eating like a lot more than that. I think Kelly's average is a pound and a half to two pounds. Um, but when she's obviously when her calories are that high, she's eating a lot more fat than that. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. And it does seem like even, even like men kind of eat around that too. So it just, it's like from what I've seen or heard. So it seems like this diet is kind of like two, two pounds or whatever is kind of like good for a lot of people. Um, yeah. which that seems crazy if you, yeah. if you don't know about carnivore, if you're new to carnivore, that much meat a day just yeah. like boggles people's mind. <laughs> yeah. And it did me in the beginning, obviously I was eating two hamburger patties. I was eating eight or 900 calories every other day. It just didn't occur to me. Well, part of the problem is the the typical advice for carnivore is eat when hungry until full and then stop. And that doesn't work for everybody because I didn't know what hungry and full felt like. Um, and then, you know, fasting is a huge, you know, word in carnivore. So many people fast. And I think that also is overdone and over talked about and over, um, suggested. Yeah. 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 Because you don't need that. I think you, and, and lots of people say you're in a fasted state being on the carnivore diet because your body is already burning fat for fuel. So you don't need to do that. Um, and it's better just to nourish your body. So when I do it, like once every two weeks, it's really just, just because we're busy and I might as well for the autophagy because, you know, I don't mind on a busy day, but if I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And I think it's really important to just to remind people that you have to experiment and do what's good for you, not just because a whole bunch of people in the carnivore community are doing something. Um, yeah. It might not work for you. And that's okay. Yeah. That doesn't mean that anything's wrong with you. Um, yeah. It just means that we're all different. So, so don't feel bad if you do try something and it doesn't work try something else and see, find yeah. what does work. Just cause something's trending, um, doesn't mean that we, everyone should do it. Um, right. just cause it's popular. Yeah, uh, I agree. let's see 22, uh, 22 years ago, my doctor said just eat zero carb and move your body for an hour a day. No tracking. <laughs> what a great doctor. <laughs> That's an what's awesome your, doctor. Lil, what's your, um, health like and, um, you know, do you maintain a healthy weight all the time? And what does your diet look like? I'm really curious because that's a long time. Do you take days off? Like, how does that work for you? Take your time because that's a lot of questions. Yeah, because a lot of people, a lot of the time I hear the argument that, well, you feel good now, but just give it a few years. You're going to feel it's going to catch up to you. Um, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And so 22 years is a, a long time, really long time because I, I've, a lot of people say, no, there's no long-term carnivores. And there, that obviously isn't true. Um, they're just not a lot of long-term carnivores in the spotlight. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And there are some, there are some that have, you know, been eating that way a lot longer, you know, they're just mm-hmm. not, you know, really active in social media and stuff. Yeah. Cause so, so it seems like social media is, you kind of have to try to be on social media to get your story out nowadays. It's right. the new public square, which yeah. is why if you guys want to share your story, message us and yeah. we can do a six minute success story. So you can share your experience with carnivore and get your story in front of more eyeballs. So we can convince yeah. more people that eating meat won't kill you. Exactly <laughs> right. Five, five minutes. Okay. But if you guys watching have any more questions about carnivore or you want to share some of your um, like victories or anything like that, drop them in the comments and we'll put them up on the screen. Uh, we're just here to hang out with you guys and chat with you guys and get to know you um, and make some yummy chicken. <laughs> uh, 
share your story. Yeah, yeah. So you should definitely come and share your story with us. That would be yeah, so cool. Yeah, please do. Yeah. 22 years, that's Wonderful. that's awesome. That would be such a good... Uh, like motivator uh, for people. Yeah, yeah. Because that is true. There's, there's, because there's not a lot of people sharing their stories that have done. I think I've seen a couple other YouTube channels where they have yeah. like carnivore for 40 years, but it's like, it's very few and far between. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. And so, um, just to remind you guys, in case we have some newer viewers on that weren't here earlier, um, make sure you send us messages if you want to be part of our six minute success story series. We're going to put that here on YouTube. It'll be really easy. We're just going to send you uh, the questions in advance. So it'll be super fast, the filming of it, um, which is great because more people will watch it if it's shorter and you don't have to be so nervous about doing it. If it's shorter like that, you're already going to know what we're going to ask you. So that'll be really helpful. And then um, on Friday, we are going to do, uh, we're going to release a video with um, a snack idea for the holiday and something that you can bring to a holiday dinner or a holiday party that everybody else will like. And then you'll know that there's something there for you to eat. So I'm gonna make um, like sa sausage cheese balls and Jess is gonna do like a, a hamburger cheese ball. And those will be great. You can take those in a container or a hot plate or whatever to all of your holiday gatherings. And then you'll know there's something there for you and everybody else will love it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so someone said due to an accident, I'm on a liquid diet and I do not do dairy. What do you suggest? What? Uh, a meat that? milkshake. I don't I know. A meat milkshake, some, some melted butter, some heavy cream. <laughs> a liquid, a liquid diet. I wonder. Oh, dairy. That's why? dairy. No dairy. Yeah. Um, like, does it have to be all liquid? Um, you could do one of the things that I really like to do. Um, just sometimes I crave it is I'll put some, and I don't know if this might not be liquid enough, but I'll put some bone broth in a pot and let it come to a boil. And then I'll scramble up a couple of eggs in a bowl. And while the broth is boiling, pour it in really slowly. And it creates almost like an egg drop soup kind of texture that is delicious. And it's easy to make. It takes, you know, like three or four minutes to make it. And um, that's almost liquid. I don't know. And how long are you on a liquid diet for? Oh, so it says all liquid, uh, broken jaw and chin. Maybe you'd like two like uh, raw eggs and just like- yeah. uh, uh, So the eggnog. eggnog. Oh, that's dairy. Oh, no, that's dairy. Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, so just um, mix up some eggs and just like take some eggs like a bodybuilder and just like break the yolks and make it into a liquid. Uh, yeah, and I bet you could do, with a broken jaw, you could do the, the bone broth with the eggs in it. I bet, you, I don't know if you could drink with a straw or something, but you could probably- do that because you can just swallow the eggs. You don't have to chew them because they're just going to be so soft and little from being blended up. Um, but that's the other thing. So you could do, you could make a soup with bone broth and some, um, you know, some ground beef. Sometimes I do sausage in it and the eggs. So the egg drop soup with some meat in it and then you can blend it. And that would be a really, have a lot of nutrients in it and a lot of fat. And that would be a good way to get in some calories maybe. Yeah, just blend. I would blend up some meat with some bone broth, you know, and do that for most of my meals and change the meats up to change the flavor. So sure. And uh, sure. I think it would help a lot of people. How do I contact you? Yeah. So if you uh, want to do the six minute success stories, um, you can email us at carnivorevolution at gmail.com. And we will set up a time to do the interview. Uh, if you have an Instagram, you can always message us on Instagram the carnivore revolution account my account serena's account you can comment under this video after we repost it and uh we'll get in contact with you so um just yeah reach out if you see any of our social media just contact us on anything and we will set up a time now we haven't um scheduled next week or the week after yet so we actually could do it next week if you wanted to yeah, yeah, that would be really cool. That would be a good yeah, second one. Would, so yeah. carnivore has reversed my autoimmune RA and ankylosing, I can't say that word, ankylosing spondylitis. Um, I've been strict for a bit over two months. A 96 hour water only fast did wonders for me as well. I'm off bio, biologics and all my meds now. Wow. wow. That's amazing. That's, That's a great story, Bill. That's yeah. wonderful. You should be on our six minute success stories too. Yeah. Everyone should, because everyone yes. has like everyone has such great success stories with carnivore. And we just need to like get them out there because 
yes, you're anecdotal, but after a point, like you have to take notice and say, there's something here. When you have hundreds yeah. of thousands of people healing things with, with mm -hmm. carnivore and eating meat, um, yeah. we, so we need all these stories out there because um, at some point you can't ignore the health right. benefit. Yeah, and what we're gonna do is we will be um, we will be tagging them with the issues that you healed. So if you're on the fence about whether or not you wanna do something like the six minute success stories, be thinking about how you felt when you had the autoimmune, you know, RA, you know, when you were so, when you had so many things going on, think about how you felt and do you want to maybe help other people that are going through that same thing at this point, you know, would be really nice to do. And so just yeah. be thinking about that because we will tag them with the issues that were healed and that will help other people find it. Yeah. Cause like in my situation, I had severe constipation before I, I was gluten-free for 10 years, but before that I was only going to the bathroom once every about three weeks for the majority of my life. And I thought that was normal. I had no idea that that was abnormal because back then in the early nineties, you didn't talk about poop publicly. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I thought I was, that's how it was supposed to be. So if, if I had people sharing their stories and, and things like that, maybe I would have seen that I had a real issue a lot sooner. Um, yeah, so it's so important to, to share your experience with people because you never know who's going to see it and who you're going to impact. Yeah. Okay. So you my timer went off. Yeah. You want to take yeah. it out to me? I have to take the top off and put it back in for a little while. Can you hear the sizzle? Yeah. Whoa. Okay, let's see. Let's point this down. Of course, there was a better way to open ovens and get your stuff out. Ooh. So Ooh, it does look hard. cooked. It does yeah. look cooked. The skin didn't get crispy. Do you? Yeah, we're, I think we're going to have think... to put it back in. Okay, put it back in a little longer. Yeah, with the, um, without the top. I'm going to go ahead and salt mine a little bit now. Okay, I'll salt mine too. Where's my salt? Okay. Oh no, I don't have my salt. I ran out of Redmond's. I'm waiting for my mom to send um, me some in the mail. I offered to send you some. Remember? You did? Remember you a couple months ago? You said no, I offered though. to send you. Remember, I was ordering and I offered to send you some. I actually, I that you reminded oh. me. This is the one you sent me. So I have the little awesome. one here. Hey. <laughs> I'm not sure mine is done. This stuff is so good, you guys. If you haven't tried Redmond Real Salt yet, um, you can find it at Sprouts and, and places like that or buy it online, but it's the best salt. And um, Whole Foods has it. I'm going to go I ahead and check mine because I don't even think mine's close to being done. The inside still looks pink. Well, mine won't be done. Oh, no. Mine's not even close, Jess. I don't have a thermometer. Which is, you might get to taste yours and I might not get to taste mine until we were done. Oh, mine's not going to be done. Oh, you know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to put some butter on it now. Oh, okay. I'm going to go ahead and get mine back in. I think my oven is set. I'm going to put that down. I'm going to plop some butter on it. Let's go higher. I set my oven for a little bit higher, but um, it's probably going to make the smoke alarm go off, so be warned. Okay. I'm just going to plop my butter in there. Okay. And, ah. Okay. Let's see. I'm loving... I am loving your shorts on the channel. My husband and kid find them hilarious too. Thank you. Uh, I will, ooh, uh, Wild Bill's gonna reach out and, and share. Oh, share good. Story. So That's yeah, awesome. just, just email us, find us on, on Instagram. We're on Instagram, Facebook, under comment under this video and we'll get in contact with you. But. Um, if you are just now tuning in and you saw the chicken, <laughs> we're making chicken in uh, our black pearl earthenware 
and just hanging out with you guys, answering your questions, listening to your stories too, uh, and listening to how carnivores helped you because we just want to get to know you guys more. And and I think this will be like a weekly thing, don't you? Well, yeah. We'll come yeah, online. We've already, yeah, we've already scheduled most of the month of December mm -hmm. um, for these so that we, because we wanted to be sure that we got them in. And um, I think it'll be good. And we do need to hear from you guys. We need to hear your stories so we can all help share the story so other people will hear about it. I mean, that's how that's how most of us got here was hearing somebody else's story. So if we're not sharing our stories, then, you know, we're not like paying it forward. You know, that's one of the things Mark said to me earlier on our live was, you know, he feels like he should pay it forward now and help tell other people about it. Yeah, because and if you some people like Serena, like aren't as comfortable sharing with their family and stuff directly, but maybe you um, whereas other people are more capable of sharing with their family, but not strangers. So like if you are more comfortable sharing with um, strangers than your family, like it's still going to be a great opportunity to um, to reach out to people and and make connections, too, because that's yeah. how me and Serena met, too. So you might you might make lifelong friends in the process as well. So yeah. you're not only are you helping people, but you're going to be enriching your own life even further uh, yeah. by by stepping out of your comfort zone and sharing your story. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll be here every week. Is it going to be every Wednesday? I don't what think they're all Wednesdays, are they? You want me to get I my don't... calendar? Oh, I put them on my calendar. I put them on my phone. Let me look and see. So there is, so we do have a live scheduled next, next Wednesday for the 8th. And oh, it's going to be the 14th too. And they then, are on Wednesday. Oh, the 8th for me. So the 7th for, for you guys in the United States and the 14th for you guys. So, yeah, so the next two are going to be on Wednesday evenings in the United States. Um, and we're going to be trying to do – our goal is to do a live like this every week and just kind of cook with you guys and chat with you guys and hang out. Um, yay. Uh, Serena and Jess make my night with these lives. Yay. Hey, thanks for joining. Um, I did my, let's see, this evening was a tough, feeling great. Ooh, so Wild Bill did uh, first hot yoga session this evening. It was tough, but feeling great now will continue for sure. That's cool. Yeah, definitely. Because one one thing that uh, I know our friend Jen talks about it a lot, but um, mm -hmm. exercise is so important too. It is. With, um, just getting moving your body. You don't necessarily have to like go and lift a ton of heavy weights or run a marathon or something like that. Just right. go for a walk, find something you enjoy, try hot yoga and see how you like it. Like, like Bill did. Right. Um, mm -hmm. but just move your body in some way. Cause, cause if you, the saying is true that if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Even right. if you are, um, eating a ton of meat, you still want to try to have some muscle too. That's right. Um, and I took, I took um, the last few months off, um, not really for any reason, except just not wanting to get up early. And if I don't get up early, I won't do it. Um, but I, I had COVID in July and I was in a really good routine before that. And then just never got back into the routine and I'm regretting it now. You know, you always regret it. Quitting exercise is always the worst thing you can do because restarting is the worst. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it says I'm late. You are cooking chickens or game hens, maybe. My thing says chicken, so I'm assuming it's a chicken. Uh, yeah, mine's a chicken too. But mine may not be done when Jess's is, so she'll taste hers, and we'll finish because mine looks like it's got. Mine was quite a bit bigger than hers, I think. <laughs> yeah. Let's. My most of my packaging is in Japanese, but it says whole chicken. Right. Yeah. Oh, mine did too. So maybe yours was just a smaller whole chicken. Mine's just a tiny little chicken. But Wednesdays, yay. People are liking the Wednesdays. That's good. Oh, good. That's good. That's the only day I have off from, like, basketball and stuff. Okay, so um, I think mine's done. I think I'm going to just pull it out and okay. try to open it and see what it looks like. Okay, let's see. Oh, are we there yet? She was here last week too. 
Wednesday's good for me too. Woo! Evening lives are fun to me. I set my notifications for them all the time. Yay! Awesome. awesome. We're so glad that we're going to be able, this is going to like work out because this is so fun for us and we love chatting with you guys. Yeah, mine's definitely not done. So I'm going to live vicariously through Jess till mine's. <laughs> Let's see. Let's the bra looks look amazing. The yeah, I put the, the butter, butter in. It. It yeah. Put the butter in it. Let's see. How do you cut? So I left, I left the top off mine so it'll get crispy. Oh, that's that's smart. Okay, I don't know how to cut a chicken, so I'm just going to get Slice it like a turkey. Yeah, just slice it. How do you do it with a rotisserie chicken when you get them? I just you start cut on the other. Oh, do the, like, Wait, the other side of the bone. I have to flip like it over? A, no, there's a bone in the middle, though. You have to go one side or the other of that bone. <laughs> oh, my god! I don't know. I don't think my knife is sharp enough. Okay. How do, so now what? Now what do I do? I'm so bad uh, at this. Yeah, I just go on the other side of the bone and cut the meat off. Can you get the meat? chicken looks it will look like that it'll be stringy like when you get a rotisserie chicken that i don't that doesn't mean anything to me it doesn't well you know how you can peel the rotisserie chickens you get at the store you won't be able to peel it if it's not finished. i don't know what you mean by peel well you didn't you just say that that you just like start peeling it you know how the chicken like comes off in like little strips no i, I mean when i eat a rotisserie chicken i just start like i take the skin off and just start eating yeah. it yeah, but when you pull the chicken, you know how it comes off in chunks like that? Like when you pull chunks of chicken off of it with your fingers? It but won't do cold. that. It, this it is, won't do I that. I don't know. It, this, <laughs> I need a thermometer. Put it, it, put it closer. This is what it looks like. Well, I think it's done. Yeah. Because if it was raw, you know, it wouldn't come off in chunks. We'll see. I'll let you guys know if I get salmonella. Yeah. Chicken's but, the worst. Chicken's the worst to get sick from. Oh, well. YOLO, right? <laughs> it looks like it's done. Yeah, no, I think it's done. So the only thing, so this works really well. The good thing about the pearl is that it keeps the, the moisture in the meat and it makes it uh, really tender and moist, yeah. but it doesn't get uh, the crispy, the crispiness. So yeah. Um, I will probably put it in the air fryer to make the skin more crispy because yeah. crispy chicken skin is like the best. And I definitely need to get a thermometer because I don't know how to tell if, if chicken yeah. is done. Yeah. I mean, it, because it, like with beef, it doesn't matter so much because a lot of people eat beef, you know, raw or, you know, partially raw or medium rare, or, you know, rare. So with beef, it doesn't matter as much, but with chicken, you really do kind of got to be a little bit careful. Um, well, so with chicken, so the raw meat experiment guy, uh, he eats raw chicken, but I guess it's if it's undercooked that that makes it you, you sick, but oh, right. he, I, he eats a oh. ton of raw chicken, but, but not undercooked chicken, which I don't know why that That's is. That's weird. I've never heard that. So yeah. here's mine. I'm going to put it back in for a little while. It's still not done, but it's starting to get crispy on top. So I'm going to put it back in and... Yeah, later wait, I'm gonna just put, I'm just gonna put mine back in the oven too without the lid on because that was really smart that you did that. Okay, should we wrap it up? So everybody doesn't have to wait for our chicken to finish. Yeah, so um you can air fry instead. Yep, she yeah. she said the same crispy chicken or such such a treat. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the chicken skins are so good. It's the best part of the chicken. But yeah, I get chicken skins from my local boot. Oh.
Oh no. <laughs> we lost Serena. Well, I think the connection will probably catch up and come back in a second. But come on. Crispy chicken. Oh, yeah. Holy cow. This is it taking a really long time. Uh oh. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up anyway. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And <laughs> I feel so bad that her side froze. Oh my gosh. Um, thank you guys for joining us and asking all your questions. If you uh, are just now tuning in or you tuned in late, we will do this every uh, we'll do this every week. Um, for the next few weeks, it's going to be scheduled on Wednesday. So we'll see you guys here again next Wednesday night. And if you are interested in joining our six minute success stories and sharing your stories, uh, story with us, then contact us on Instagram, comment under this video, email us at, uh, carnivore revolution at gmail.com. And, um, Oh, Serena's battery died on her computer. <laughs> okay. So, um, thank you guys again and have a good night and we'll see you later.